Hi ladies and gents, Sinead here with Free Tours by Foot London. I have just come out of Borough Food Market and I'm standing in front of the Clink Prison Museum, one of the most notorious medieval prisons in London. Now we're going to have a little trip inside because I want to take you in there and see some of the instruments of torture. It's quite terrifying in there actually, so I'm a little nervous about this. But before we do, firstly, today's tour is going to be about the Bishop of Winchester, Winchester Palace, the Clink Museum, and a very somber memorial to the ladies that were known as the Winchester Geese here in London. We're gonna to head to the Crossbones Memorial Graveyard. What I wanna to talk to you first about is the area that we're actually in right now. This area was known as the Liberty of the Clink. And technically, the man who was in charge of this immediate area was a chap called the Bishop of Winchester. Now, Winchester, was the former Saxon capital of the United Kingdom. So the bishops of Winchester, when they came here on administrative business, well, they needed a seat of, well, a very elaborate palace, shall we say, to stay in. And this is where I'm about to show you, is what is called Winchester Palace. And this is in Southwark, just by the Golden Hind, between the Golden Hind and Borough Food Market. Now, there's a lot of history coming away about the bishops of Winchester, but when it lost its seat as the capital, and London became the administrative capital. The bishops moved to this area. And I just want to show you the remains of what was a very elaborate and one of the most important medieval buildings in London. The 1400 year old remains. Uh, well, in fact, these bit remains rather are dating back to the 1400s of the Bishop of Winchester's seat in London. So I'm going to turn the camera around so you can see. So here you have it right here just in the area of Southwark, which was outside the jurisdiction of the city of London. So literally this area was run by the Bishop of Winchester. Now the bishops of Winchester were mostly a tax collectors and they collected tax from all the local residents in the area. But more on that to come in just a moment. Um, this Winchester Palace is one of the largest and most important buildings in all of medieval London. It was built in the 13th century as a home to the powerful Bishop of Winchester and it was destroyed by fire in 1814. Uh, founded in the 12th century, the Bishop Henry de, Blo de Blois, uh, B-L-O-I-S is his name, he was a brother actually of King Stephen at the time. The palace was built to house the bishops in comfort when they were staying in London. So the remains were part of a great hall. So that's what you're looking at right now, the remains of a great hall here in the Bishop's uh, Palace. And right up here, you will see that beautiful rose window. And this led down into vaulted uh, wine cellars in the basement that were attached actually to the wharf here on the River Thames. So they got all the special goods uh, came directly in here through underground passages and tunnels. So this area known as Southwark, ladies and gents, was traditionally the area of a den of iniquity, shall we say. One of the poorest of the poor lived here in the Bishop of Southwark. It's where the, the theatre, the dastardly theatre, which was very much frowned upon in uh, medieval times here in London. Actors and actresses didn't have much more social standing than the ladies of the night themselves. Uh, it's where the brothels were, and they were known as stew houses in this immediate area. And when the bridge was built across the River Thames, the first bridge crossing London Bridge, young chaps used to fl arrive over here, over the bridge, and it gave easy access over to the brothels and the pubs and the alehouses and the theatres in the area. And they would avail of the local prostitute services and the brothels in the area. Now, far from being displeased by the brothels in the area, the Bishop of Winchester actually taxed the prostitutes and he licensed them essentially, making a considerable fortune from these poor young girls and sex workers. They were known as Winchester geese because they were under the ward of the Bishop of Winchester. And young gentlemen would cross the river and they would rattle their change in their pocket, be surrounded by several of these Winchester geese, 
who were effectively living in the worst slums known to humanity. And the cackling of the competing of the geese for the gentleman's affections is where the name we believe came from, Winchester geese. Now, um, a very unfortunate history surrounds these poor ladies of the night in the area, because although the bishop licensed them to work as sex workers and, and taxed the brothels, the final insult is when they were buried. They were buried in unconsecrated grounds. And it's a massive insult to these ladies. And later on, I'm going to bring you to a cemetery in the local area as well, where they unearthed about 15,000 remains of paupers, Winchester geese and babies that were all just thrown into this uh, crossbones cemetery without a care in the world for them. So they were good enough to be taxed, yet not good enough to be dignified with a decent Christian burial. So due to the outcry of people in London, and particularly a certain group of people, they have set up a beautiful memorial garden to the Winchester geese. But just here is a little bit more about Winchester Palace. We'll uh, just show you the little information here. And the residents of the bishops of Win Winchester, very influential bishops, actually. They were all chancellors of the exchequer. So uh, the minister for finance uh, is technically what that means. And they were the chancellors of the exchequers for the king. Um, but also in and on the premise of the palace was one of the most terrifying prisons in history, the medieval prison the clink and right now I've just spoken to the lady in there I'm about to head downstairs and take a little tour of the clink so this street is known as clink street in fact and you'll see it up there clink street now ironically um, of course the bishop made a considerable fortune from taxing these girls but you could literally be drunk and intoxicated around these streets at night time, as so many people were. Gin was usually the drink of choice, the cheapest to make and the quickest to get drunk on. And we speak a lot about prostitution and the Jack the Ripper tour as well in the East End of London. Uh, one of the most depraved neighborhoods as well in the city of London. But this is medieval time. So right here is the Clink Prison Museum. And we're gonna head in there, but it was pretty barbaric in here you could be literally imprisoned for being intoxicated and you might never see daylight again which was um, rather ominous some pretty barbaric forms of medieval torture in there as well i'm just going to head in that direction but i just want to give you this little bit of information here as well so the cling prison is the name given to all the prisons that have stood on a number of sites in the vicinity. Now we believe clink is onomatopoeic, so as to represent the clink of the chains when the, uh, the wardens were locking up the prisoners. The first prison in 1127, sorry I'm just under London Bridge so there's quite a bit of noise above, was a cellar in the palace of the Bishop of Winchester. And the last was in Dead Man's Place, Park Street. The prison held Protestant and Catholic religious martyrs at various times and it was closed in 1780 when it was burned by the anti-Catholic Gordon Rioters. So let's head in. Now I won't film it all, I will just film some of it because, well, we don't want to be too long. But look how ominous this is, it's actually quite creepy entering in here. <laughs> So you mightn't hear me because there's this real uh, monk's chanting. You are entering the original site of the clink, the prison that gives its name to all others. So the lady, I'll just wait for her to let me in. I have to ring for the jailer, I think, it says. Thank you, lovely. It's really bizarre in here. So hopefully you'll be able to see this. So this would be obviously one of the jailers. It's not too dark for you. I'll uh, see if we can get some sort of a no entry, it says there. So I guess we're going in here. <laughs> and here, here's to me. Ooh, it smells really weird in here, you guys. 
So this appears to be the very rich and unjust Bishop of Winchester. Medieval Southwark, some of the chains that they used to torture these people. The blacksmith's work in process. I make the stack, I bend the rings, the hinges and the rivets. Right, let's have a look through here. This is actually quite creepy on my own, you guys. Thankfully you're with me. So picture above is the artist's impression of the initial site of the King Prison. Very well done, actually. God, this is quite scary. I am such a girl when it comes to these things. If I would enter his service. The wife of the house answered for me, saying that it were great arms that I had a good master and mistress, then did take out an action of trespass in the court of the Bishop of Winchester in Southwark. So essentially, Ellen arrived for a job in an innkeeper, is that's what she's saying, and uh, it became a brothel or a den of iniquity. And she refused to work for him, so he had her locked up here in the clink, folks. So this is where we're going to visit later on, it's the Crossbones Graveyard. And it's the prostitutes' graveyard. The plot of non-consecrated ground was provided by the Bishop of Winchester as a final resting place for single women denied Christian burials. Yet they were good enough to tax at the time. We have some of the older clothes. You hear a woman, a baby crying here. Oh my days! There's a woman hanging out of the prison wall there. It's probably a little too dark. Remains of the clink prison wall right there, you guys. Now we won't delay too long in here, but we'll just have a little walk around because I wanted to show you. Another prisoner here, priest obviously, Father William Weston. But this admission prices are about eight pounds, ladies and gents. I think there's a family price as well, six pounds for seniors. So these are just some of the prisoners that were famous prisoners that were married in the clink, John Rogers, people that were kept in here. It's the torture chambers, one that I'm quite interested in. Ooh, here we go, the catch poles. An abiding danger to lawmen. Violently resist arrest and it may be safer to take them into custody with, from a safe distance, hence the catch pole. Oh, I see, so they would catch them around the neck if they resisted arrest. Barbaric medieval prisons, you guys. So the weapon of war is a hybrid of the conventional mace and military Flail. The chain allows the ball to be swung around the edge of the opponent's shield, it says. Wow. Torture in England. Water torture, the gallows. Wow, look at this. And literally, heads on spikes like William Wallace on London Bridge. And all along London Bridge, in fact, people's heads were displayed on spikes as a warning to future treasonous subjects, particularly the likes of what Tyler, the head of the Peasants' Revolt, and William Wallace. So that's a description of being hung, drawn, and quartered. I'm thinking this video should come with a PG warning, maybe. Now this is quite nice over here. This is a memorial to the prisoners of the clink. Thankfully, something to remind them of. 1886 to 1712. This displayed by these of wrongdoers served as a warning to others. Oh, wow. So they displayed the bodies on trees as a warning to others in these steel types of gibbet bars. Terrifying. Continue in St. George's Fields. Great fire and plague. Lord save us. Our old days now gone and faded. So, so many ended up here in the chopping block, ladies and gents. Liberty like I knew. The 
dreadfully execution tended to be quite a fun excursion for some people particularly between 1136 and 1868 Let's step up here it's estimated over 200,000 people were publicly executed in London between those years I'm in some sort of a red room now just bear with me okay here. Not a lot to see in there, I'm afraid. And we're back at this area again. He's posted Wanted Dead or Alive posted. And the prerequisite gift shop on the way out. Oh, Amelia Dyer, this is the um, the baby killer. She was executed in the old Bailey. She is responsible for the death of up to it was over sorry my lovely four thousand babies. She was hanged at Newgate in eighteen ninety six. She was a midwife and she was providing children to un of unmarried mothers, which was quite scandalous at the time, two childless couples. Um, they were paying for the children. She ended up killing most of them as well. It's a complete psychopath. She eventually was hanged and she was caught on the 10th of June in the Old Bailey, which was formerly Newgate Prison. We showed you that on the City of London tour. So that's the inside of the clinic. Okay, so I'm pleased to be above ground after that, you guys. I'm I know it's only a museum, but it felt really eerie and just the smells in there, etc. So the Clint Museum, another huge um, medieval building of importance in this immediate area. But thankfully to Nicola, one of our subscribers, and hi Nicola, um, she suggested that we take a little walk and pay our respects to the Winchester geese. And that's where I want to take you next. Now, just a little bit of background on the prostitutes in the area perceived essentially to be um, obviously the ladies of the night they were frowned upon but what's quite ironic about these ladies of the night is that even though the Bishop of Winchester taxed them we know that uh, they were just thrown into this pit and just buried without any Christian burial but they were also kind of perceived as welcome distractions for the gentlemen in the area because ironically sodomy and masturbation was a mortal sin at the time which is so bizarre so they were perceived as welcome distractions to keep the men from pleasuring themselves elsewhere shall we say so we're going to head down and pay our respects to these um, when they tried to extend the jubilee line they found over 150 remains now they were usually the peasants in the area uh, infant mortality rates were very high as well so a lot of infants and Actually, the 150 remains is only 1% of what was actually found in here. So it's a very somber place and I think it's very important that people come here to pay their respects. And the Crossbones, the Friends of Crossbones Society are the ones that deserve massive recognition for what they've done in preserving this area and making a garden of remembrance. Just one second, sorry folks to the 15,000 forgotten people that were here. Uh, just a quick mention as well, syphilis was, um, a, there was a huge rate of infection of syphilis in the area as well, obviously because of the amount of prostitutes in the area. There's been some very famous people over the centuries that died of syphilis actually, that I wasn't aware of. One, Oscar Wilde being another. Um, Lenin, uh, the Russian revolutionary and several others that is quite fascinating. So syphilis, commonplace in the area at the time. So that would have been a huge uh, cause of death in the area. So, but we're gonna go down and just say a little prayer down here. And just to show you this little hidden away, unknown burial garden of memoriance to the victims or the Winchester geese and the paupers in the area. So thankfully their legacy lives on with this gorgeous garden of remembrance and I hope you en enjoy it and uh, it might be somewhere that you'd consider coming maybe just to see for yourself when you're in London. Next stop, 
the Crossbone Rail Cemetery. So as promised, ladies and gents, I brought you down here to um, what is called Crossbones Graveyard, a very somber place considering that they found over 15,000 remains of women, children, and men who lived, worked, and died in this impoverished and notoriously lawless part of London. So it says here, the history of the place is not in confined to some distant past. It's an ongoing work in progress. Since 1966, the Friends of Crossbone have worked to protect the site and to raise awareness of its historical, cultural, and spiritual significance. So initially when they were unearthing an extension on the Jubilee line, they found remains of over 150 people, which was only 1% of the amount of people that were actually buried here. The Museum of London arrived and they excavated the site and found these remains. So now people come here to pay tribute to the Winchester geese and the paupers that were left here and buried here in an unconsecrated grounds. As previously mentioned, they were good enough to be taxed, yet they weren't given the dignity of a decent burial. So thanks to the tireless work of the Friends of Crossbones and the poet John Constable, they usually have um, a vigil here on the 23rd of July every month to remember the the forgotten essentially so these ribbons are all to represent the lives that were lost and so cruelly disregarded in this pauper's gravesite in London so amazing work by these people to ensure that their memory lives on I believe the Dean of Southwark comes here and he once a year and will perform a mass here for the lost souls. So a very somber graveyard here in London. A little bit off the tourist track, not something that people are too familiar with, but the history of the Winchester geese. And they were the ladies of the night under the ward of the Bishop of Winchester, and framed there in the background by the shard. So make sure you come here to pay your respects. You can tie a little ribbon there on the wall as well. Um, I seem to have stumbled upon a film crew here as well, so may they rest in peace.